The Small Business Show, episode 160, for Wednesday, February 28th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include... Smiles Text Expander, where at textexpander.com slash podcast, you will save 20% off your first year of this awesome utility. Shannon and I can't wait to tell you about it, but we will. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We will. We'll wait just a little bit here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How, how's it going, man? It goes. It goes. That whole back thing that cool. uh, that I was dealing with, I'm, <laughs> I'm still dealing with. Uh, trust me, these things don't just go away, but it's way yeah. better than it used to be. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, you I don't have to podcast and... with a heating pad. Yeah, exactly. Ah, nice. You yeah. can have inflection in your voice. Right. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah, all, well, that's cool. I can have intended inflection as opposed yes. to uh, forced yes. inflection. That's right. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's good. <laughs> right on. Right on. That's good. Glad to hear it. Good to be healthy. Uh, and so today, hey, you know, I want to talk about a uh, a search. Um, well, I guess a method or whatever is that's being used more and more is people are searching and uh, using the terms near me and then, you know, inserting whatever you're looking for in front of that, you know, coffee shop near me, right. uh, auto repair oh. near me, landscape contractor near me, whatever, uh, whatever you're selling, whatever service, computer consultant near me, uh, you're really trending heavily on, on Google. And there's a lot of stuff you can do to help your business come up higher in the search rankings with that. Uh, when near me is, is you. So I thought we would, it was worth spending a uh, part of, or maybe the entire show uh, talking about it today. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I've heard uh, more yeah. and more people talking about this uh, lately. Uh, and when yeah. I say lately, I mean the past few years where. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, that, you know, I was talking to a consultant down in Connecticut when I spoke at his user group and just asked him like, okay, so how do you get your business? And he said, well, you know, I like word of mouth and obviously all of that's good. But in terms of the new business, he said, yeah, it's mostly just like Google local searches. Whoa, right. Right. Man, so blew me away. yeah, 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 for sure. So, so speaking of that, you know, the first thing you want to make sure is that number one, you have a listing uh, of your business in the, uh, on Google in the local search. And we'll put a link to that uh, in the show notes today. And if you already have one of those things, uh, your listing, which hopefully if you're in business, you you do have that. Sure. Um, it, it's critically important. But in, in addition, there's there's other sites you want to do the same thing. Uh, Apple Maps, really important to make sure your business listing is is there and up to date. Because if you're searching on your, uh, you know, customers searching on their iPhone, and they ask oh, Siri right. near what's near me, it's going to come up and search Apple Maps. It's not going to go to Google Maps. Um, uh, and the same with Bing. Um, and, you know, you, you want to make sure these three major mapping platforms know everything about your local business. Um, and we'll put some links to that in the show notes. And so let, let's talk, we'll, we'll focus on Google, but this is the same for all these platforms. But we know Google's the 800 pound gorilla uh, and uh, love them or hate them, a little bit of both. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the speaking 800 pounds, don't, you know, when you create your, your Google Google local page, don't use your 800 number. Um, you know, this is all about local. Oh. It's not about finding nationwide Jeez. stuff. You really want to tweak it to uh, local customers. And uh, Google suggests, you know, using your local area code, local number. Um, and in addition, again, you want to personalize it. You know, you don't want to use don't go grab stock photos of, of happy, smiling people. Uh, take pe take pictures in your office, in your shop, and, you know, in your lab, whatever you've got. Um, use custom images of your business and your people, your services, whatever it is. So uh, this is gonna it. Rank higher. And, and I mean, I'm asking some of these questions simply to yeah. prompt the conversation. But <laughs> to, be, to be of honest, course. I'm also <laughs> asking some of these questions because I don't know the answer. Uh, so, like, th this is – you're creating – essentially a separate web page uh, in Google's search structures so that when th when people look for for things locally, like when you when when I look for things locally, what comes up there 
are things that either Google has just slurped. I see. I always assumed it was just Google had slurped these images or whatever. And maybe that's true. Used to be. And, and they okay. still do that. You, okay. Yeah. You'll still come up in those rankings. But if you look on the right side, yeah. Google is showing, you know, things like, OK, well, here's the top three businesses that come up related to the term you're searching for. And uh, so, you know, you, you they're trying to speed everything up. They don't right. want to have to go out and search. It's like the accelerated mobile pages or whatever. Yeah, uh, you know, but this they, is even actually, beyond that, right? I it mean, is. It's like yeah. you can go and edit these things to a degree yeah. it, as long as yeah. you stay within the Google framework, which is the whole idea. Huh. That's right. And and um, you, the same as with Apple Maps. You go through the Apple, the Maps Connect thing and and they, they kind of prompt you with a bunch of stuff. And, and you're basically... Yeah, like you say, creating that little mini web page, if you will, or or at least that record. Yeah. And, and it's a good point you bring up because uh, if you have multiple locations, you want a different record for every location. Right. And, you know, and it's kind of a pain. And I always struggle with things like reviews and different things because, you know, uh, e- you know, you, it's great. You want to aggregate those reviews to get the most mileage out of them. But if you're up in creating this local listing for each location, uh, customers can be prompted to leave, you know, different reviews based on where they went. Right. Because right. those are different, different experiences, different customer service people, different, whatever. Um, so it's important to, cause reviews are part of the process as well. And those reviews are going to help your rankings. The more activity uh, that Google sees that's going on, they're going to, they're going to, of course, the algorithm thinks, oh, well, this is relevant. And there's a lot of stuff. People are talking about this business. So I should show this to them when they search near me for, you know, breakfast <laughs> or whatever term you want, uh, you know, computer repair. And so you want to promote that and you need to promote it for, for your, each of your multiple locations. Right. Oh, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, when you go and populate this with your pictures, you could, in theory, if you've got good pictures on your main website, you could certainly take those. And that way you've got some consistent branding that people sure. might recognize if they go from, if they've seen yeah. one and then go to the other and, and all of that. But, but to your point, if you've got just like generic images on your website, this is not necessarily no. the right thing for your Google lo- uh, local listing. Yeah. Or, you know, Google's all about relevance and they're really, you know, trying to make it super useful to whoever's searching. Right. Because uh, that's their whole gig. And so y- you want to make it very relevant. So if Google looks at you've got five locations and every single one has the same photo, perhaps that isn't as good. Right. right. Because they're not you. They, they're not unique. And, you know, if, you, if you're taking photos with an iPhone or an Android phone or whatever, you know, it's going to have those uh, uh, geolocation tags. Oh, and right. I would argue that Google is certainly smart enough to look and go, hey, here's the address of this place. And this photo was actually taken there. Um, so that's I think that's important. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And and so. Along the same lines, you know, don't redirect your your URL, your website address. You know, don't get fancy or whatever. Google doesn't like it. You just want to use whatever, uh, you know, web address you're going to use. And if you've got one main website and each of your locations has a different page within your site, which I would suggest is a good idea. Sure. Um, you could use that that address and it would like just the, go you right use to the that sub, thing. The, the, so if I have uh, whatever, yeah. you know, DaveTheNerd.com slash Durham, New you Hampshire, and then DaveTheNerd.com yep. slash Austin. I mean, wherever I have locations. Right. That would be the, uh, and then you use yeah. that. No, that makes you sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can even put. I never you, thought about any of this before. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting concept. I spent right. hours struggling with this because there's nothing that frustrates me more when you you know put all this data in, you're trying to tweak it and everything else, and your listing doesn't come up when you grab another computer and you know flush yes. the cache and go, what's near me for this? And you're like, why am I not coming up? You know, so it's it's a constant you know, tweaking of this, tweaking of that. And it's not one of those things that you can just do it and leave it alone. I was just going to um, say, I, I mean, can't this, do is, it. this is one of those things where it's just sort of the, the fact of life now where yeah. it, it, any kind of search engine optimization, certainly you need to, to do <laughs> whenever the first time you do it is, that's going to be the first time, but you need to come back to it regularly in order to, you do. to, to, to be successful. Yeah. yeah, and they'll link to your um, and I'm 
draw a blank on this. The your Google Places is it Places? Uh, no, it's not Places. Uh, your whatever page you can post Google updates in your blog and all that kind of thing. Um, Eh, well, I'll think of it. I'll put it in the yeah. notes. Your circle okay. and all that stuff. But there, there's definitely ways to push some additional data up there, and, okay. and just want to go up and make sure it's accurate. And you can respond to reviews, which I think is very important. Uh, you know, especially if you want to clarify something. Um, you know, we we've done a lot of shows about how to respond to reviews. You know, that that's not the place to get in an argument with a customer, but it's, and, and maybe not even thank a customer, but certainly there's some opportunity for clarification or sometimes you do just want to thank them, I guess. Um, yeah, right. and, and that's a great way to get some activity up there. Um, and, and but the reviews are really critically important, uh, to, to be listed up there. Um, and, and when you're, when you're putting in your data, make sure you use your real address, you know, hopefully, You've got a physical address, you know, PO boxes, mailbox numbers, all that kind of stuff. They don't rank as well um, because it doesn't work right uh, with you know the the search. So right because um, it's not it's not a it's not an actual location. It's not there, yeah. So yeah. if you're working out of your house or you're a consultant, I mean, you know, it can be a little challenging. So you may have to think about you know, okay, well, what is um, like you know, I have a, a mailbox at my local UPS store, sure, because um, I'm currently. Uh, I don't have a commercial building, uh, which yeah. is an entirely different different conversation. But uh, right, right, you know, so you you could use that if it's in your local area. So you may need to think about okay, I can get a physical street address at at this you know UPS store or FedEx office or whatever it is. But is it in my geographical work area? You know, maybe it's not right next to my house because I want to be in the center of commerce wherever that is near me. So you have to think about the placement of those. Uh, virtual address, if you will, because oh. that's what's going to come up in the search. So if if your business is consulting with, you know, uh, corporations and they're all down in the financial district in San Francisco and you live in, uh, you know, a town or city, you know, a half hour away, where do you want your address to be? Well, your address needs to be where these people are going to search for you. Oh, and you could hack that a little bit by by just going yeah. and getting a like you said, you, sure a, could. you know, a, a, a box, not a PO box, but a box at yep. one of these these mailboxes. You need a sweet type number places. You need yeah. a sweet number, yeah, exactly. yeah. And that's great. Like I love the the UPS store; they give you that. You know, you have a sweet number, and it's just a mailbox. But you know, you can certainly get that. And uh, I I would say that's a that's a a way to, like you said, kind of hack that uh, address, but it just may not be a convenient one. Like there may be a UPS store five minutes from your house, yeah. but if that's not where your customers are, don't get that one or don't, or get another one, you know, use that for them. something, right. but yeah, yeah just get as many mailing. as you got. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So you want to be in that address and be on that, on that map. I never um, would have thought of that. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. 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 It's, it's important. It's important. It's, it's a constant mind bender trying to figure out when it when it works it's awesome sure uh, when it doesn't work there's nobody to call <laughs> i mean there's no one to you know thing and, and speaking of calls the each of these places uh whether it's apple maps bing uh, you know google maps they're going to want to make a phone call to your to your business to verify that everything is you know is correct at least that your phone number is correct and they're going to give you a verification code and everything which sounds really simple Go ahead. You sound like you want to say something. Well, I was going to say, though, you were about to get into a very interesting conversation. So ex yes. explain the 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 topic that we're going to go into. Then I have something I want to do. And then and then we'll we'll revisit. Yep. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Well, we're going to what we're going to talk about is is ways to get around um, these companies inability to understand how your phone system works. Because so many of us have, you know, like a a, a a number that's not really a number, and it it, yeah. it it you know you have extensions and a it, we used to call it a PBX system. I don't even know if that yeah. that term it's is a virtual applicable. phone system. Virtual whether phone. you know, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Oh uh, and it, and it's, yeah, it's how do you super convenient? But you've got to kind of tweak tweak it. Yeah, oh yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. Well, we will come back to that after we sure. talk about uh, our first sponsor here, which is Text Expander. Uh, text expander is a tool. It's from a company called smile and man, it is the thing that makes my life so much easier. It's one yep. of the top, like it's one of the first five. It might even be like one of the first three apps that I install on any computer I use because what text expander lets me do is 
I have all these bits of text and some of them are big, like entire letters or maybe just an address. Right. You know, if, if you, especially yep. like we're talking about here, you've got three different addresses, one for your your customers, one for your mailing address, one for your home. You don't want to fat finger any of those when you're typing them in. So what you do is you put them in the text expander and then you assign them a shortcut. And so for me, like I can have, you know, uh, I type comma D H A D D and that puts my home address out, but I can type comma D H P O B and that puts my P O box out and I don't have to think about it. Right. And if, yeah, it's awesome. I, you know, if I want to have something sent to Shannon, I can have Shannon's address in there. I could do comma S G S J A D D and then boom. It puts your address in. I don't even have to remember your address. It's just right there. If somebody's asking to ship us something or whatever, it's and it's not just that, right? You've used it for customer service too, which is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Keeping it a consistent uh, message and uh, way you want your responses phrased to your entire customer service team, it, it, and you can sit there. I mean, you know, you can be up in the middle of the night create all these responses the way you want things handled and they just pick and choose oh this when a happens i use this response when b happens i use this response it, it, it's phenomenal and you put them into your library which is synced with the text expander cloud so that really not only do you have it on all your machines but like shannon said you've got your team has those responses on their machines updated they don't even know that you've edited them necessarily unless they're That's working right. Uh, makes a huge, in fact, there was an email I was writing this morning. Somebody wrote us and said, I want to advertise on the site. You know, we gotta, we have to like suss these people out because so many of them are just fake queries or, you know, people kicking the tires or whatever. So I wrote a response and I thought, you know what? That's a really good one. And I just highlighted it and I went to the text expander menu and I said, create snippet from selection and boom, now that's in there. I can tweak it over time, but I start with this foundation of, a sort of a natural email that I wrote to somebody and now it lives and I don't have to like copy paste it or anything like that. That's what text expander takes care of. So visit textexpander.com slash podcast. That's where you'll go. You get 20% off of your first year's subscription of the text expander service works on all your devices. Really, really great stuff. Again, visit textexpander.com slash podcast for 20% off. Our sincere thanks to the folks at Smile who make Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. All yeah, right, man. I just checked. I just checked my Text Expander library. I've got about 185 <laughs> sn yeah, snippets. Right, in there. right. That's, yeah, right, right. It, it's a life changer. Yeah, it it's is a life changer. Totally, it's great. Totally, it's good stuff. All right, so back to the uh, the near me and getting you know your Google page and Apple Connect and on the Apple Maps and all stuff and and uh, as well as Bing. And, each of these services is going to want to verify that, number one, you have the authority to enter all this information and update and make corrections. You need to own this account, if you will. Sure. And, and, and they want to make a phone call. And it sounds very simple. And if you're a consultant working with your cell phone or whatever, uh, or you have one line, it's very easy. But if you're using, you know, just like a virtual address where you're hacking, if you're using like grasshopper or phone.com, or if you're one of these, you know, dinosaurs that... Uh, company's been around for a long time and you have a PBX where the phone comes into an auto attendant and it's routing through all kinds of extensions, which, you know, we used to have, yeah. uh, it's, you have to be able to answer that main phone number. Uh, you without so if, Google having to enter an extension or anything like no, that, right? You, Cause it's they're, a computer they're, that's doing this. It's not going to interact with anything in, uh, other than a human. You're going to, you're going to have to answer the phone. They're going to say, all right, if you're expecting this call from Google, Bing, Apple, whatever, press one, one, they're going to give you a code. You're going to enter it, you know, just like a, like a two-step verification code. Sure. And then you're going to be the owner of this record. So if you've got uh, like when we had a, uh, our PBX, we literally uh, had to shut everything down and just have one extension, one phone for, you know, this five minute window. Yeah. And, and you can do it anytime. You do it on I was the just going to say, you could do it on the weekend or the yeah. middle of the night or something when you, that's you right. Know, chances are you're not going to get a call. And most yeah. of your phone systems, uh, you know, even if you've like, we use phone.com, which we we've used for years. Um, sure. And, and it's great, right? Because it, it's super flexible, but to do something like this, it really isn't that difficult. Like you don't have to break everything that you've done. You just create a new rule and make it the most prioritized rule. And so a call comes in, you say any call that comes in, forward it to say your cell phone, 
and you're done. That's it. Yeah. And that's right. it won't follow any of the other rules because they're because it's already done one. And yeah. And then when you're done, just when you do it. the verification, you turn it off or yeah. Yeah, yeah, delete, but you right. need to be yeah. sure that that's going to happen. And because the other way they'll do it, if they can't verify it, you know, they're like, well, we'll send you a letter and it'll have a code and this kind of thing. And it, it, that's it's, a it's a bit. It's a bit clunky. And so you you need to be able to answer the phone, whatever number that you're going to put and answer it directly. Right. Um, right. So yeah, huh. I think that's that's real important. That's really smart, and, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah. never thought about that problem, but that's I mean, it's a real I, I've had to deal with that before. I don't know how I've I have I know I've never done it this way until you started talking about it. I never thought to to just you know, temporarily redirect. I might have yeah, done the first, first time I, yeah, was, first yeah. time I did, I was like, why am I not getting this phone call? You know, yeah, what's right. going on? And then right. it would be, I would, and then we had, you know, this massive PBX that routed to like, you know, 40 phones throughout the area and, and forwarded to all kinds of salespeople and everything else. And I was literally there trying to grab the, the call before the, you know, before the auto attendant picked mm. up. And then finally I just like, well, shut that thing down. And then, yeah, just turn it know, off. It, yeah. it works fine. So, yeah. um, so some more, some more tips. I mean, this, a lot of this stuff is really basic and, you know, I, everybody's, uh, I got the, I'm sure most of the stuff figured out, but I think it's definitely worth revisiting. Or if you're just getting started or building a new website, really important to do. Um, make sure your business name, your local address, and your local phone are on every page of your website, you know, down in the footer area, whatever you want. Uh, make sure it's accurate. Don't use, you know, if you're a, a corporation, don't use ink. You know, if you're an LLC, leave out the LLC. Nobody cares. And Google, it, it just messes things up when you have that. So just have your business name, mm -hmm. local phone number, your address uh, right in there and, uh, you know, zip code, the whole thing. Uh, and I would create, you know, like we mentioned earlier, uh, make sure you have different lo uh, local pages for each location you have. Or if you have, uh, you know, let's say you have a bunch of consultants working for you out in the field or technicians or whatever they're doing, and each one services a different city, town, county, whatever it is, you might want to have a, a location page for each of those people. Uh, and I, I would argue that it comes up, you might get a little better response in the, in those near me searches. Huh. And then you just got to keep testing these too, right? I you mean, do. You no need to be searching. You are. Yeah. You need to yeah. be the one searching. You need yeah. to be searching. Um, and, and you can use terms like near me, nearby, near you. You can use that in your website in, you know, title tags, keywords, and that kind of stuff. But, uh, I think it's better to create, a you know, specific page or section that just focuses on, you know, what are you near? You know, do you talk about local whatever? I mean, you know, that that's be a resource. So here's what, here's what is around us. Cause if people are searching for things and they're around some other, you're trying to correlate your, uh, or triangulate, if you will, your location compared to other stuff. So if there's, other uh, monuments or places of interest around you, you can mention those on a local page that talks about, you know, near me. And that I think that will help you. Huh. Um, but, you know, don't be, you can't spam it. You know, you, you can't just use near me, near me, near me a hundred times and put it in clear text. It's not going to work. Right. And, and they're, you know, Google and all these mapping places, they're changing too. They're trying to give the most relevant uh, search result and those things like your reviews, how often you've updated your record, uh, current, like, you know, uh, th th I mean, when people click on the call button, right? If you're searching in, on your phone and you, you find a business and you click that phone number and it's call, I guarantee you that's going in the, some record that says, wow, you know, X number of people click that call me button. I need to show this result a little bit more or, gee, nobody's clicked that call me button in six months. Maybe this business isn't around, you know, I don't know. And, and yeah. so all those, all that data is being captured. Uh, and so you want to, you want to keep up on, uh, on this stuff. Um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, I think it's great to create a local resource page that has content for people to learn about your area, what's around you, what's there to do, where to eat tourist stuff. I mean, you can put it in your blog, you know, but, uh, you know, become a resource, not just a, Hey, I'm trying to sell you something, but you're like, well, here's, I'm proud of my town, my city, my County, what my state, whatever it is. And, uh, here, here's what it is. You know, we, we do vacation rentals and I have a whole page of, for each of these rentals that, 
lists. Here's stuff to do. And not only do I share it with people that, you know, rent these places from us and say, great, here's stuff to do when you get up to the, to South Lake Tahoe, for example, but it helps us in the search rankings when people search, uh, you know, for things to do. And we come up often uh, on those searches. So you can be a, a, a resource and it'll help you in that, you know, that near me game. How would you, you've obviously stayed on top of this, right? I mean, you have to with, with you have to, I'm not, you know, I'm certainly no expert at it. I'm so often, I'm not very good at all at it, but you just have to keep tweaking and changing and trying to find what works and what, what doesn't. So that's my question is, is, is it, in your opinion, and obviously everybody's different, but do you employ someone to manage this for you to do this for you? Or do you find that it's actually better to have hands on even, you know, even only sporadically, or I don't want to say sporadically, but maybe, you know, once a month, you're, you're making sure you do this. Is there, is there a system that you follow? I think it depends on your size. You okay. know, if, if it's just you and a couple of people or your whatever, you might have the, the touch that's needed, but yep. I, I also think it just, it needs to kind of, we, we've combined it with our, our social media, you know, program. It's just part of this kind of stuff. So if you've got somebody managing your, your Facebook, your Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, your blog, all this kind of stuff, I, I would say you need to add it to that, uh, mm. routine of, okay, you know, every couple of weeks, you know, I need to check this or every 30 days, what's going yep. on or are we getting reviews and, and then cross-linking all that stuff is really powerful. You know, every time we got a new Google review, uh, you know, we would promote it and it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe not every time, but maybe bi-weekly you look at it and say, oh, I got some new reviews. Let's push those off to Facebook and uh, mention something on, you know, oh. tweet it out. And so you're kind of, cur- you're kind of creating this circular thing, if you will, that there's all these references of good stuff, you know, about your, about your company. So that could be you if you want to deal with it. Uh, but if you have somebody that's, I, I usually try to hire people that are a lot smarter than I am and, and I can kind of fumble my way through this stuff, but I often get very frustrated when I don't see instant results. Instant results. And, right. Yes, and, of course. And man, it, it is a long game. Uh, it is a constant battle. And, you know, you may need to hire an outside company to really help you at least build this foundation that you can then modify over time. Right. You know, large companies that are very successful and very profitable are, are definitely having either in-house entire departments that deal with this stuff or they're hiring outside companies. Um, you know, and we've had some of those companies on here that that are paying outside social media and search uh, consultants a tremendous amount of money every month to be found. Yeah. So it just depends your kind of what you're what you're looking at. But you're, yeah, uh, right, right. But you can certainly do it yourself. I mean, you know, the the key thing is just to have these uh things on your website um and you know, mention what you do throughout your, you know, create this local page and talk about what you do because the search engine is trying to combine your location information with these keywords. So if somebody's searching near, you know, a computer repair near me or, uh, you know, tree removal near me, well, that that's what they need to find that. And if they're not around, you know, located uh, or they can't find those keywords associated with location, I think it's more difficult for, uh, for them to do that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I like like your concept of a feedback loop. I like taking, when you see that review constantly like linking, like we should be doing that with this show. Anytime there's a review posted to, of course, iTunes reviews are nearly impossible to link to, but maybe just taking the text of the review and saying, or a screenshot of it and, you know, posting it to our Facebook page and our Twitter page saying, Hey, you know, uh, you know, Tim B reviewed us this way on iTunes. Hey, if you want to review us, here's a link to, you know, get you as close as we can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we always just say, say, thanks, you know, Hey, thanks for this great review. And, 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 and I would say that, you know, there's also a real good uh, opportunity to show your authenticity if you have kind of a not you don't want to if you're having a, tr- a trouble customer, you don't want to promote that. But if you have sure. a customer that made some comments or, uh, you know, can some constructive criticism and you respond in a respectful way that like, wow, thanks for pointing that out, that our phones didn't get picked up during this time. Here's yeah. what here's what happened. Here's what we've done to fix it. That's a great thing to promote as well. And to say, oh, 
so-and-so helped us solve this problem. You know, thanks for pointing that out because it's real. And, and people like that as well. You, it's not, you don't always have to promote the five-star glowing reviews, you know? Um, and if, in fact, if that's all people see, uh, I would argue that they, that sometimes they think, well, it's not, it's not as realistic as if you've got a few three and four stars in there. Every, yeah, everybody right. has that. There's no way you're going to be perfect. And, no. um, and, you know, and, and on this local page, you know, uh, you can mention those reviews as well. Make sure you're, if you've got a Yelp page that you've, you know, again, built up and focused on trying to get those reviews, which, you know, we've done shows on that as well. Link to that, link that page, uh, uh on your, on your local thing, uh, your local. Okay. Page so your you website. can, you can link to, to things like Yelp in, in addition yeah. to linking to just your local page or your website's Yep. page that highlights yeah. that location. Yeah. Yeah. Link Yelp. You know, if the, if the better business bureau has given you an A plus rating, even if you're not paying them, cause that's, right. it's a different, if you're not an accredited, you know, they want some money for that, but if they've given you an, a good rating, put that link on your local page, you know, our local better business bureau has given us an A or an A plus check this out. Um, your chamber of commerce, if you're mentioned any of that kind of stuff, um, especially, you know, bigger sites, it's just, it's always great to have those links. And that's the place to do it when it's localized. If you were recognized that as a business there, you know, there's a, there's a company called uh, small dog electronics. I know, you know, Don, yeah. Don Mayer and happy mayor. Those guys are just brilliant at using awards. They've gotten They're They're really into causes and, uh, and uh, they have a multiple bottom line philosophy, which I, I really like. And they, they mention this stuff all the time throughout their site. And I know it, it really must help them. So. It's cool. Fascinating. Oh, and they yeah, do a good job. Yeah, so. yeah. They do. Yeah, no. They, and, they, yeah. and you're right. They're they're very good at promoting who they are, not just what they want yeah. you to buy. Yeah. And what they believe in. And, yeah, and they're not, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, and, and, yeah. And some people, you know, are, are may not like that. But I think overall, it's a good thing to be authentic and to share some of that. Well, people, um, we're humans. We know. like personality. Yeah. And we don't like right. everyone's personalities, you know, so it's going to turn right. some people sure. off. But but That's we okay. are drawn to, you know, we we are naturally more able to trust something that has a personality versus just something that's, you know, a faceless entity or a black box. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It, it's, I, you know, I always go back and forth because when you're small – or, you know, when, when, when companies that I've started that are small, I'm always working to make us look bigger, right? Yeah. To, to, to instill trust and, oh, we've been around and look, and we do all these things. And, and yet that's your website and your, your, how your phone system works and how you respond and all this stuff like we talked about, right? And, and all these standards. But once you get to a certain size, then it almost flips because then you want to start promoting your personality yep. and, and your people, uh, you know, cause so, so there's this, I, and I don't know when that time, you know, occurs, I would I would point, argue you know. that in many businesses that flip should actually happen right at the outset. That you just Maybe, promote. Yeah, you, you could be right. I, yeah, I, but yeah. I'm I'm always I always err toward the uh, the same thing you mentioned, where it's like, okay, we're small, we know how to make ourselves appear big, but then you appear faceless, right? And yeah, you have to you have to uh, do it in such a way that you know. Y- y- you could, you could do it from the outside. You could say, look, we're big or we're established. Maybe that's yes. a better, uh, we're established and we're trustworthy, but check it out. Here's our barbecue on Friday and yeah, here's this right. costume contest or whatever, you know, whatever you're doing to, to let people connect with your business beyond just like you say, this faceless entity, yeah. I think is important. Yeah. You know? and, and, and the last thing I want to point out is since, you know, you want to be sure you're doing regular updates to your blog uh, and posting those on social media and when it's applicable you want to mention your location and, and mention that, that local page. And, and if you have multiple locations, maybe you, you kind of rotate and talk about stuff on your blog that's happening at your location. Because if your city is having some kind of festival or if you're whatever it is, you know, uh, that's around you, if they're building a new building, if something's going on, that's great stuff to mention and then link back to that local page. And, and it, you know, it kind of, brings you in as part of the community and and the search engines love that stuff because they know people love it. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. just circular yeah. kind of just making sure not overdoing it, but anytime That's it right. makes sense to do it, put it right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah you like I said you can't be spammy. People know when it's spammy, you know, or it's totally. automated. You can't do that stuff and and what what I would love is is uh 
you know, if you've got other ideas or things that have worked for your business, you know, come share it with us, you know, feedback at businessshow.co or uh, jump on the, the Facebook, the small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Share your stories. Tell us, you know, what's worked for you, what hasn't. I'm sure. In fact, I guarantee it. There's a lot of people out there that are better at this than I am. And uh, we'd love to, you know, have you on the show if you want to come on or certainly uh, share your story with everybody else. Be great. Yeah. Very cool, man. I, I feel like I learned a ton today. This is great. <laughs> that's good. I don't know where that's I'll old. use it, but I, it's like, I'm, yeah, that's well, right. I mean, but that's the thing is it, you know, like the reviews thing, it, that's applicable no matter how big you are, what type of company you are just, but promoting your reviews so that people know they can leave them too. But it, it like, it, yeah. like that's such a great thing, even separate from the whole local conversation. So, and it's hard to get those reviews, you know, people get inundated with all day, everything you do. They're like, please leave us a review, leave us yeah. a review. You buy, you go grocery shopping, go, yeah. please go review please. me. Yes. Yes. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't want to, <laughs> so you got to remind them. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Right on. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you told them how to find us. I think that's uh, that's about all we got for it's today. It's a wrap. Man. Please, uh, right please keep living that charmed life and make sure you use Text Expander. Textexpander.com slash podcast for 20% off. Helps you with that charmed life. We'll see you next week, folks. Yep. See ya.